Morning. Hello. Good morning. Hello. How are you? How are you all? Oh, hey, the sun's nearly shining. It's enough to cheer anybody up. The sun is shining. It's just I've had to block it out because I couldn't see you. Although maybe I should just let it back in. Yeah, no, don't. Yeah, no. Keep it locked out. No, we like the stripy white line down your nose. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> And you well, David? Yeah, we don't want the sun, we want the, uh, the wind to that. We want the wind today, don't we? That we need. Yeah. Yeah, only two annual parochial meetings to go, Chris. Oh. That's ten down, two to go. And, life will, be, and life will begin afresh. I think you secretly love them. Yeah. You all, are you, are you all finished, Chris? Yeah. Oh, that's why yeah. you've got that that virtuous glow, isn't it? A pious look. Yeah, but you've got to remember, I only have four to do. Well, I've only got one to do, and I still haven't done it. <laughs> <laughs> ten down, ten down, two to go. And um, I realise that that means I've only got 26 to do uh, for the rest of my ministry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's always scary, isn't it, when somebody starts counting down? Mm. No, it isn't. The only thing I, I, I do count down annual meetings, because I've realised that in many in many ways they're quite pointless. <laughs> it is a lot of work. It is. Um, I mean, how do you hold an annual meeting for a com for a community when you only have three people turn up at a meeting? It's it's kind of uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So the message is to give you, uh, if you want to know what your church does, yeah. it is worth going to these annual meetings, and it makes the pure <laughs> person leading it feel like it was worthwhile. Yeah, I mean, I think the process is good. So we've done this um, review of the year. We've been doing it for a while, and um, you know, looking back, it is quite instructive because you you know sometimes you think oh what have i been doing or what have we been doing and um we've been doing quite a lot really and yeah, uh, i'll be honest that's what we do in many of the parishes is yeah. basically review of the year and particularly the clergy report you know i, I do the first bit you know the, the reality yeah. of life in rural ministry today and then joe points out actually just how much we are doing and have been doing and i think that that that, that that's good but it's, it's the yeah. process of, 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 of trying to elect people onto committees that yeah you haven't got that's the real the real problem yeah and uh you know my, my force again this year is yet another attempt to say we've got to work more centrally yeah. in, some, in some areas yeah. but, but of course they all like their independence and you, they think you know you're going to take the money off them individually or whatever the case may be which doesn't happen and won't happen but as we think about Sunday being the birthday of the church, perhaps it's a new revolution to start. How about that? Right? That's a link and a half, isn't it? Ooh, you're on fire. The tongues of fire are, are hovering over your head. Oh, no, oh, tongues I think, of fire, I think flames, we're going to have to let David do the reading from Acts today, doesn't I think it? so. I think so. Yeah. Do you have a pause then? Yeah. Of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. I promise I'll try my best with all the names. Great. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and were bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? 
And how is it that we hear each of us in our own lang native languages, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and, pros and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's de deeds of powers. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and, our young, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to say, woohoo! Yeah, what a what a stirring reading that was. Actually, it's not glorious. Very often you get reference in the New Testament, the Gospels or, or Acts, discriminate dis differentiating young and old. Your young men shall see visions, your old men dream dreams. Does that mean, David, you and me are allowed to sit back in our chair on an afternoon and fall asleep and have a dream? In our snooze? Um, I suppose it does, yes. Yeah, I like that. I think that's a beautiful passage. Your young yeah. men will have visions and your old men will dream dreams. I, just, I, I think that's a, a, a beautiful passage. Yeah. Is it trying to say that when you get to a certain age and you need to retire, that you dream dreams that you can't fulfill, whereas the young men can see a vision and they've still got the energy to drive forward towards it. Mm, I don't think so, because I think dreaming dreams is really important. Um, but I think it's just, yeah, I don't know. Dreaming dreams. Yeah, nothing, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I think I think that the, the, you know the, they were very keen, weren't they, in 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 that part of the world in those days on wisdom, and wisdom came with age, didn't it? Yeah. And and so the old men, the dreams, perhaps are a, are are a reference in a way to uh, to to vision, or not vision to to wisdom. And uh, I don't know about you too, but I've certainly learnt over the years that. Uh, Sometimes it's far it's far better to uh, uh, not not to have dream uh, not to have visions all the time because we keep setting visions and then have to reset them. If you have to reset a vision because the first one isn't working, you haven't been very visionary in the first place, have you? Yeah, and I must admit, actually, when I was when I was younger, early days of ministry, probably you know way before I was ordained. And things went on. There was a couple of retired priests in the area. And if you went and asked them any question, you knew you got a wise answer and a sensible answer. And that wisdom that they developed over their lifetime was actually, I think, invaluable. Mm. Um, and we need that, you know, to, and it was just, the, and it was often just a calmness of, Okay, this is the situation. This is how we'll deal with it. Don't panic. This is what we do. 
and that calmness of wisdom was brilliant um but i think the other day i think i love that verse 17 i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and daughters mm. shall prophesy it's a lovely inclusive statement mm. David's falling asleep. He's having a dream. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is I think it's, no, certainly not a vision. I mean, I was just what you had to say. I think it's it's excellent. It's like the very last w words we read there, wasn't it? You know that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And what else do we need but comfort from that, really? Yeah, and it's great to know that it's there for everybody. Um, I know I shall get. <clears throat> I know I shall get on Sunday morning in one of my services. Somebody will say, oh, have I got to do that reading with all those difficult words? Mm. But actually, all those places and locations just go to demonstrate that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And it's here for all those towns. It's not just for, it's not just for Egypt or the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene. But actually, it's Mesopotamia as well. You know, it even includes England. Yeah. Pontus and Phrygia. All and there. Pamphylia. You don't forget Pamphylia. Very important Pamphylia. So, you know, yeah. and they're all here in their different languages. I mean, I think it's, you know, it's a brilliant passage. You know, we, we can get tied up or excited with the divided tongues of fire and explain how all that worked. But actually, the result is the love of Jesus is here for everybody, wherever you are, and whatever your circumstance, male, female, young, old, rich, poor, healthy, ill, Jesus is here and pours out his spirit for all. It is a challenge, though, because that is, you know, on the face of it, that is not the way the world works. And, and I think it is a challenge to hear that. Because not just now, but in any time we live in, we are very conscious of how we divide people up by their language, their age, their ability, their wealth. Yeah. And I mean, this that's why this is powerful. But, um, you know, especially because of where that's happening and, and we know what's happening in in the world in the Middle East, but not just there, in loads of places. And I heard this really good program on the news the other day about all the places. Oh, I think it might have, I don't know if it was on Thought for the Day, but it was about all the places where there is conflict. I think it might have been Giles Fraser and saying, you know, we don't even hear about half of them. Okay. Um, and um, depending on where you are and your experience of life, that could sound very difficult because you could say well that's very good to hear that but my experience of life is it's not like that um, which doesn't invalidate it but it it does kind of call upon us to i don't know just to um to acknowledge that at least um i don't know what you do with it it's difficult but hard isn't it Oh, it is hard. And I think, you know, I mean, I often think this is one of the things that put Jesus on the cross. Because he was trying to speak to everybody. And those in power didn't didn't like the idea of including those isn't. And, you know, it's very easy for whoever we are. I mean, I think the phrase I've, I seem to have used it quite a lot in the last six months is. We don't necessarily like different you know redheads want to unite women want to unite men want to unite young people want to get together and we all get together with people that are similar black white middle East, you know wherever we're from um, and we tend to want to then think that if somebody looks different to us as in you know they've got a different disability or a hidden disability we want to reject them because we like to think that the way we are is the better way in the way God wanted us to be um, but you know to think that actually we're not we're just included among everybody else 
mm. in whatever state we are can be hard to accept mm. it's also because you know the thrust of these stories is of course about you know, the story of the first Pentecost it's also very difficult to try to explain just what the how, what the Holy Spirit is because I went to uh as ever, Masterton School for uh, Assembly yesterday, and it's, it's what we'd, they'd been learning all week, and the, the head teacher had read the story I was going to read from the Lion Story Bible uh, earlier in the week to them. And so, I, so I just talked to them about the Holy Spirit, and the teacher teacher said to me, yeah, could you talk, try and explain a bit about the Holy Spirit? Because it's a very difficult concept for a child to understand. I think it's a very difficult concept for many adults to understand. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind children, and I did f fell back partly um, with them. But you know, the, the easy thing is to ask them what they think, and there's some very, very good um, input from them. Some of them with great insight. I didn't think I think they got the concept fairly well, really, for for children of that age, nine and ten, and you know, ver verge on eleven. But um, I I just fell back on my usual whatever you know you don't you, you, you know it's, it it. it, it one of them said it's, it's one of them said it's a spirit, and uh, we talked a bit about that, and uh, and 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 then I went on about you know you don't see it's actually what you see is you see the action of it but you don't see it you know the wind in the playground tell you the usual you know if you threw all your crisp packets which I know you wouldn't do in the morning in in the playground and the wind blew what and they thought they'd blow about and etc. and and they they could get hold of that. But again, I, I then touched on what we're going to be thinking about next week, which is Trinity, of course, being Trinity Sunday. And this idea that, uh, you know, three in one, one in three, what they mean, and that the Spirit, you know, my, my explanation of Trinity Sunday is, you know, we know God the Father, so could we say our Father in the Lord's Prayer? And we knew that Jesus walked the earth, and, and the Spirit, you know, God works here today. And that's and and they, they they grab that concept quite quite well and i think it is a difficult concept this idea of what is a spirit because if you talk about spirits today a lot of people think of ghosts or things roaming around don't they yeah of course that's not what the holy spirit is 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 about at, at all it, it it is for me god working amongst us and in us and in the world mm. uh, in a way that we have no control over yeah yeah you know? And we forget, don't we, that actually God has all the power. We are but powerless people who work with what God gives us. We're just crisp packets in the playground. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a thought. We're yeah. just a, but a crisp packet can even absorb the wind. Yeah. yeah. So the yeah. wind of the spirit that's blowing around, just open your mouth and breathe in deeply. Yeah. And absorb God's spirit. Well, I'm going, to be, I'm going to be challenged by that last verse later on today. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Because I'm going over to Yeovil. I've got to take my car, dear viewer, to be serviced because it's 12 months old. And uh, while I'm there, I'm popping to the hospital to see one of our parishioners who is dying, sadly. Well, perhaps not, because she'll go to the Lord, I'm sure of that. Um, but she says she's lost all of her faith. She prayed to God and she doesn't believe he'll save her. Mm. So I'm going to be challenged because I should probably talk with her and the reading with her today. Mm. And that's a challenge we have all the time, isn't it? Because we are challenged in life, and you know sometimes God feels miles and miles away. And I have to fall back to what is really the trite answer: No, it's not us. It's not God. It's us who've wandered away. But actually, I can understand that feeling that God is letting us down if you've got real troubles in your life or difficulties mm. in your life. It takes a great deal of faith and trust to hang on to a lot of what we're taught as Christians, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. it does. Yeah, yeah, we are challenged. And, and that is part of Christian faith. It is a great challenge. You know, I, I said many times in sermons, being a Christian is not easy. It was never meant to be. It never will be. It is a great challenge. But it's about trust in a God who does love us, promises us many things, and ultimately, I don't believe will let us down, but it doesn't stop the doubts or the fears or the concerns or the, the mm -hmm. times. And, you know, I should I should read this reading with her today, probably, and say, you know, the spirit is there. You may not know it, you may not feel it, but it's God still loving you mm -hmm. along this 
part of your journey of life and into the new one that will follow. Yeah. You know. That here we are. Like a good point to stop. Yeah. Yes, I was meant to say that. Thank you. So there we are, dear viewer. Thank you very much for, for watching us. It'd be interesting, you know, if you want to, do, do send us a message. Tell us what you think about uh, about the action of the Holy Spirit or what it may be to you or how it affects you. We'd love to know. And thank you for watching and joining us each week. And uh, and thank you to Debs and, and Chris for, yet again, uh, erudite uh, comments and, uh, and conversation. Gosh. I think you flatter us too much, David. I I try to, just to keep you going. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you found us. You know where we are. All the other links are there. If you want to know more about any of the churches in the uh, in the Lion Bay Deanery, just click on the name of a church, and uh, it'll throw up their website, and you can find out all the exciting things that the Spirit is doing in this area. Because there are lots of exciting things that the Spirit is doing in our area and uh, and we'd love to share with to, to share those with you and uh, and and see you and perhaps come and join us for worship be good to yeah. see you that'd be great that would be great all right bye bye everybody bye. See you next bye. Week.